Thank you, Antif. <laughs> How good it is for all of us to be together on this sacred day of Yom Kippur. We begin our service on page 304 as we rise for the Barucho. together the watchword of our faith, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hero Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Shema Yisrael. We continue on 306. <laughs> Alvavecha, Vishinantam Levanecha, Vidibata Bam, Vishivtecha Bevetecha, Vilechtecha Vaderech, Vishochvecha Uvekumecha, Ukshartam Leot Al Yadecha, Vihayule Tota Fort Bain Enecha. Uchetavetam al mezuzot betecha uvisharecha leman tizkeru vasitem et kol mitzvotai vitem kedoshim lelohechem ani adonai lelohechem asher hotzet yetchem. May Eretz Mitzrayim liot lachem Elohim ani Adonai Elohechem emet. In this world waiting to be redeemed, our hearts cry out. Cannot our dearest hopes at last come true? Many are our defeats, yet how many our deliverances? After servitude to Pharaoh, we choose service to God. After exile in Babylon, we rebuild God's shrine. Yesterday's wound, so nearly fatal, begin to heal. And Israel, living still, plants new seeds of redemption. Adonai 
va ochimo che do Adonai Gaal Israel Amen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Eloheinu Avotenu ve imotenu Elohe Avram Elohe Yitzhak Elohe Yaakov Elohe Sarah Elohe Rivka Elohe Leav Elohe Rachel, Ha'el, Ha'gadol, Ha'gibor, Ve'ha'nora, El, 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 Yom, Gomer Chasadim, Tovim vekone hakol vezoche chaste avot vimaot umevi giula libne vnehem leman shemo be'ava. Remember us unto life, O Sovereign, who delights in life, and inscribe us in the Book of Life for your sake, O God of life. Again, Barugata Adonai, Magen Avraham, Vizrat Sarah. Continue praying responsibly at the top of page 311. On Rosh Hashanah we reflect, on Yom Kippur we consider, who shall live for the sake of others, who dying shall leave a heritage of life, who shall burn with the fires of greed, who shall drown with the fires of despair. 
Whose hunger shall be for the good? Who shall thirst for justice and right? Whose shall be for the Whose shall be peace? Who shall be plagued by fear of the world? Who shall strangle for lack of friends? Who shall go forth in the quest for truth? Who shall be serene in every storm? Who shall be troubled by the passing breeze? Repentance, prayer, and charity, these return us to our God. proclaim the sacred power of this day. It is awesome and full of dread. For on this day your dominion is exalted, your throne established in steadfast love. There in truth you reign. In truth you are judge and arbiter, counsel and witness. You write and you seal, you record and recount. You remember deeds long forgotten. You open the book of our days and what is written there proclaims itself for it bears the signature of every human being. The great shofar is sounded, the still small sound. The angels, gripped by fear and trembling, declare in awe, this is the day of judgment, for even the hosts of heaven are judged. As the shepherd seeks out its flock and makes the sheep pass under his staff, so do you muster and number and consider every soul, setting the bounds of every creature's life and decreeing its destiny. <laughs> Mi va 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 mi va
מי בחניקה ומי בסקילה בראש השנה Repentance, prayer, and charity temper judgment's severe decree. This is your glory. You are slow to anger, ready to forgive. O God, it is not the death of sinners you seek, but that they should turn from their ways and live. Until the last day you wait for them, welcoming them as soon as they turn to you. You have created us and know what we are. We are but Our origin is dust, and dust is our end. Each of us is a shattered urn, grass that must wither, a flower that will fade, a shadow moving on, a cloud passing by, a particle of dust floating on the wind, a dream soon forgotten. But you are the sky. We sanctify your name on earth, even as all things to the ends of time and space proclaim your holiness. And in the words of the prophet, we sing. Kadosh, 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 Adonai Tzivot, Melocha Haaretz Kivodo. Source of our strength, sovereign God, how majestic is your presence in all of the earth. You alone are our God and our creator. You are our ruler and our helper. And in your mercy, you reveal yourself in the sight of all the living. Ani Adonai Elohechem. I am Adonai, your God. We remain standing as we turn to page 324 for the public confession of sin. For transgressions against God, the Day of Atonement atones. But for transgressions of one human being against another, the Day of Atonement does not atone until they have made peace with one another. I hereby forgive all who has hurt me, all who have wronged me, whether deliberately or inadvertently, or by deed. May no one be punished until found. As I forgive and pardon those who have wronged me, may those who I have harmed forgive and pardon me whether I acted deliberately or inadvertently, whether by word or by deed. 
Our God, God of our mothers and fathers, grant that our prayers may reach you. Do not be deaf to our pleas, for we are not so arrogant and stiff-necked as to say before you. O God, God of all ages, we are perfect and have not sinned. Rather do we confess we have gone astray. Continue with the silent confession, reading through page 329.
now to page 330 as we join together in our communal confession. Together, the sin we have committed against you by malicious gossip, the sin we have committed against you by sexual immorality, and the sin we have committed against you by gluttony, the sin we have committed against you by narrow-mindedness, the sin we have committed against you by fraud and falsehood and the sin we have committed against you by hating without cause, the sin we have committed against you by our arrogance, the sin we have committed against you by our insolence, and the sin we have committed against you by our irreverence, the sin we have committed against you by our hypocrisy, the sin we have committed against you by passing judgment on others, and the sin we have committed against you by exploiting the weak, the sin we have committed against you by giving and taking bribes. The sin we have committed against you by giving way to our hostile impulses. And the sin we have committed against you by running to do evil. For all these sins, O God of mercy, forgive us, pardon us, grant us a Shekatanu Levaneka, to the Bima, the participants in the Torah and Haftorah service, and we would also like to invite the president of our congregation, Dr. Ed Royal, to come forward now.
I could say Lashana Tova or Shabbat Shalom. Both are appropriate. There won't be a kiddush after services today. <laughs> but in spite of that, I welcome everybody here. This is my favorite time of year. I consider the days of awe an awesome responsibility. It's a time when we become introspective as we gaze into our souls to seek repentance, renewal, and finally rejuvenation. Last year, we were imagining a spectacular renovation of the atrium and Herman Hall and this sanctuary, and now this dream has become a reality. So today on Yom Kippur, we have the opportunity to worship in a space that has undergone its own rejuvenation. And I'm honored to be the first president of Temple Israel to speak from this most sacred space. But being president is not just about delivering a speech. It's the opportunity to share my passion about all that Temple does for this community and to inspire others to find their passion. When I walked into the atrium for the first time after our renovation, I was immediately drawn to light, that majestic spellbinding light emanating through our new beautiful glass doors. And it focused my vision directly on our historic arc. And there was a radiance, quite frankly, that I had never noticed before. I was standing there alone and I felt as though I was looking into the soul of Temple Israel, the well from which we draw our Jewish values. I also noticed above the ark there was another light, the Ner Tamid, our eternal light, and the Torah commands that we light it in our own neshama. And I'll never forget these images and the light it kindled in my own soul. You see, light is a central and powerful symbol in Jewish tradition. We light the lights of Shabbat and Havdalah, and we light the Yartzite lights of the ones we love. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and this light illuminates this beautiful room. It's all around us, and it's within our souls. And after the spectacular renovation, we can all feel the light of an even brighter future. <clears throat> At my daughter's bat mitzvah many years ago in this very sanctuary, when the chairs were red, I remember looking into her eyes as her grandparents enveloped her in her newly made talit. Unfortunately, I probably won't get to see my grandchildren on this particular bima since they live in another magical place called New York City. But in the future, I do see the faces of your children and your grandchildren as they come onto this bima and celebrate, and we'll see all the light that flows from those spiritual moments. So how do we translate that light into something meaningful in our lives? We have a new volunteer initiative I'm sure you've heard about. Rabbi Yedwa has named himself the Volunteerism Nudnik. <laughs> and he's going to spearhead a program that will triple congregational involvement here at Temple. The volunteer opportunities that will flow from this initiative represent tangible ways for each of us to kindle Jewish values in our lives, like Ma'asim Tovim and Gimme Lut Hasadim, good deeds and acts of loving kindness. One such opportunity is our highly successful Hala delivery program, which we do in partnership with the Friendship Circle and the Farber Soul Center. And I've been so touched by the many heartwarming responses from new members and from those who have recently returned home from the hospital who have received these delicious challahs. But delivering a challah is much more than just delivering bread. It's the connection and the feeling that's created between the recipient and the deliverer. It's like the braided strands of the challah loaf. Three weeks ago, my wife, Vern, came home on a Friday with tears of joy in her eyes after delivering a Shabbat challah to someone who had just come home from the hospital. Despite this man's frailty, he insisted on meeting her at the door 
to share a bite of his sweet challah, and this touched her very soul. So if you volunteer for delivering these challahs, I guarantee you the aroma of this mitzvah will penetrate not only your soul, but also your car. You know, it's the yeast you can do. <laughs> I'm so happy I got a rise out of you. <laughs> I urge all of you to take the challenge to bring more Jewish values into your lives. And Temple Israel is the vessel through which this can be accomplished. There will be many other volunteer opportunities which will be just as sweet as the challah delivery program. So be a nudnik to our nudnik. Get involved. You can light the near tamid in your own soul. Initiatives like this challah program stem from the spirit of innovation here at Temple Israel. And it brings me so much pride as we respond to changing needs. One thing that continues to amaze me is that Temple's belief is good is never good enough when great is an option. So we still have our aspirational plans to build innovative classrooms and unique spaces in which to worship and gather. And as I've said before, this is not about a future building. This is about continuing to build our future. So stay tuned. Next year, Hillary King will have much more to tell you on this topic. We're never too old to dream a new dream. And I want to thank all of our generous donors for dreaming with your hearts and souls and helping to secure Temple's future. So as we begin this new year, may we all dream big and tap into our Jewish values. And may this space be a source of light to guide us and a shelter of peace for all of us. Good junta. We turn now to our Torah service, beginning on page 338. Our Torah will be carried this morning by Larry Kohlenberg, and we invite Joe Beagleman to come forward to lead us in the opening of the Torah service itself. And Moses said, Oh, let me behold your glory. Then God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim my name before you. Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand upon the rock. Rumamu Adonai Eloheinu, Behishtahavu Lahar Kodsho, Ki Kadosh Adonai Eloheinu. Let us exalt our eternal God and worship at God's holy mountain, for our eternal God is holy. Adonai Eloheinu ve'ishtachavu le'ar kodesho. Romemu Adonai Eloheinu ve'ishtachavu le'ar kodesho. Ki 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 kadosh Adonai Eloheinu romemu. The Lord God is merciful and gracious, endlessly patient, loving, and true, showing mercy to thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, and granting pardon. Adonai, Adonai, Erachum Vechanun, Rachum v'chanun, erech ha'paim, v'rav chesed v'emet, notze chesed la'alafim, notze
We continue on page 339 together with Avinu Malkenu. Avinu Malkenu, we have sinned before you. Avinu Malkenu, bring us back to you in full repentance. Avinu Malkenu, forgive and pardon all our misdeeds. Avinu Malkenu, have compassion on us and on our children. Avinu Malkenu, make an end to sickness, war, and famine. Avinu Malkenu, inscribe us for blessing in the Book of Life. Avinu Malkenu, let the new year be a good year for us. Avinu Malkenu, help us to exalt your name in the world. Avinu Malkenu, in your mercy accept our prayer. Avinu Malkenu, be gracious and answer us, for we have little mercy. Treat us generously and with kindness, and be our help. Avinu Malkenu, Chonenu Vane. Baruch Shanatan Torah le Amo Yisrael Bikdushato. Blessed are you, O God, who in your holiness has given this Torah to your people Israel. It has been passed from generation to generation so that once again today, on this Yom Kippur, we can read from its sacred text. And as we prepare to do so, we join together in the watchword of our faith, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Echad Eloheinu, Gadol Adoneinu, Kadosh Venor Hashemo. Adonai, Eloheinu, 
The Torah service itself continues with our Torah reading. The Torah will be blessed by Dr. Charles Schwartz and read by Lisa, Dr. Lisa Klein and Talia Dolgen.
mimcha velo rechoka he lo bashamayim he lemor mi ya alelanu hashamayma vayikache halanu v'yashmienu ota v'na asena velo meaver layam he lemor mi ya aver lanu ele ver hayam vayikache halanu v'yashmienu ota v'na asena ki karov elecha hadavar meod befiha uvelvavecha la asoto. Thank <laughs> Umishpatav, Vechaita, Veravita, Uverachecha, Adonai, Elohecha, Baaretz, Asherata, Vashama, Levishta, Vimifne, Levavcha, Velo, Tishma, Venidachta, Vehishta, Havita, Leelohim, Acherim, Baavadata. Higadati lachem hayom, ki avot obedun, lotari hun yamim al hadama, asher ata over et hayardain, lavo shama lavishta, haitoti vachem hayom, et hashamaim vet haaret, hachaim vehamavet. Natati la fanaha, Habraha ve haklala, Uvacharta bahaim, Le manti ye atavizareha, Le ahava et adona eloheha, Lishmoa becolo, Wolto cavo, Ki hu hayaha ve orachiamaha, La shevet alhadama. Asher nishbaronai lavotecha leAbraham leYitzchak uYaakov latelahem. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lano Torah emet vechaye olam natan betochenu. Baruch atah Adonai no tana Torah. Amen. We rise now as we honor these words of Torah. We are going to go <laughs>
turn now to the Haftarah portion, which begins on page 346. The Haftarah itself will be blessed by Dr. Sarah Hutton and read by Hillary King and Marty Laker. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Binvim Tovim Beratza Vedivrechem Hana Emarim Be'emet Baruch Atah Adonai Habocher Batorah Uv Moshe Abdo, Uv Yisrael Amo, Uv Invie Haemet, Vad Sedek. God says, Cry with a full throat. Do not hold back. Let your voice resound like a shofar. Declare to my people their transgression and to the house of Jacob their sin. Yes, they seek me daily, as though eager to learn my ways, as if they were a people that does what is right and is not forsaken the way of its God. They ask of me the right way, as though delighting in the nearness of God. When we fast, you say, why do you pay no heed? Why, when we afflict ourselves, do you take no notice? Because on your fast day you pursue your own affairs while you oppress all your workers. Because your fasting leads only to strife and discord while you strike with cruel fist. Such a way of fasting on this day will not help you be heard on high. Is this the fast I have chosen? A day of self-affliction? Bowing your head like a reed and covering yourself with sackcloth and ashes? Is this what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the eternal? Is not this the fast I have chosen? To unlock the shackles of injustice, to loosen the ropes of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and tear every yoke apart? Surely it is to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them, never withdrawing yourself from your own kin. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall quickly blossom. Your righteous one will walk before you. The glory of the eternal one will be your rear guard. Then when you call, the eternal one will answer. When you cry, God will say, here I am. If you remove lawlessness from your midst, the pointing finger, the malicious word, if you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall shine in the darkness and your night become bright as noon. The Eternal One will guide you always, filling your throat in parched lands and renewing your body's strength. You shall be like a garden overflowing with water, like a spring that never fails. Some of you shall rebuild the ancient ruins rebuilding the foundations of the ages past. You shall be called repairer of the breach, restorer of streets to dwell in. If you keep from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own affairs on my holy day, if you call it the Sabbath, a delight, the Eternal One's holy day honored, if you honor it, abstaining from journeys, from carrying on your own affairs or speaking of them, then you shall delight in the Eternal One. I will make you to ride upon the heights of the earth, and I will feed you with the portion of Jacob your father. The Eternal One has spoken. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Tzur Ko HaOlamim Sadik Beho Hadorot Ha El Hane Eman Ha Omer Be Ose Hamidaber Um Kayem Shekol de Varav Emet Bat Sedek Al Hatora Ve Al Ha Avoda Ve Al Han Vim Ve Al 
al yom ha shabbat hazeh, ve al yom ha kippurim hazeh, shena tatalanu Adonai Eloheinu, lik dusha v'lim nucha, lim chila v'lislicha ulcha para, lecha vod ul tifaret al hakol. Adonai Eloheinu anachnu modim lach, umavarechim otach, yit barach shimcha, Befi kol chai tamid le'olam va'ed. Uva arechet emet v'kat ya'am la'ad. Baruch Adonai, melech mochel, v'zoleach la'avonotenu, v'la'avonot amot be'it Yisrael. Umavir ashmotenu bekol shana veshana, melech akol haaretz, mekadeash hashabat ve Yisrael, ve yom ha kipurim. We turn now to the special prayers, which can be found on page 354. We invite Keith Simmons and David Friedman to come forward. Eternal God, we pray to you for the whole house of Israel, scattered over the earth, yet bound together by a common history and united by a common heritage of faith and hope. Be with our brothers and sisters whose lives are made hard because they are Jews. Give them strength to endure and lead them soon from bondage to freedom from darkness to light. Bless this holy congregation and all who serve it, together with all other holy congregations in all lands near and far. Uphold us, shield us, and bestow upon us abundant life and health and peace and happiness in all our dwelling places. Bring to fulfillment the blessing of Moses, the eternal your God, make you a thousand times as many as you are, and bless you as God has promised you. Amen. O oh God, send your healing to the sick, your comfort to all who are in pain or anxiety, your tender love to the sorrowing hearts among us. Be their refuge through their time of trial as they pass from weakness to strength, from suffering to cons consolation, from lonely fear to the courage of faith. Amen. We pray for all who hold positions of leadership and responsibility in national life. Let your blessing rest upon them Make them responsive to your will, so that our nation may be to the world an example of justice and compassion. Deepen our love for our country and our desire to serve it. Strengthen our power of self-sacrifice for our nation's welfare. Teach us to uphold its good name by our own right conduct. Cause us to see clearly that the well-being of our nation is in the hands of all its citizens, you us with the zeal for the cause of liberty in our own land and all lands, and help us always to keep our homes safe from affliction, strife, and war. Amen. We pray for the land of Israel and its people. May its borders know peace, its inhabitants tranquility, and may the bonds of faith and fate, which unite the Jews of all lands, be a source of strength to Israel and to us all. God of all lands and agents, answer our constant prayer with a Zion once more aglow, with light for us and for all the world, and let us say amen. amen. There's such a sense of relief as family members return to their seats. Relief for them and relief for their family members. Two days after Rosh Hashanah, I phoned a friend who lives out of state to wish her a happy new year. 
She's active in her congregation and is, in fact, an admirer of her rabbi. I asked her about her services. She said they were beautiful. I asked about her rabbi's sermon. Her response, rabbi was wonderful. I asked her to tell me the subject. I was met by silence. She admires her rabbi. She thought the sermon was interesting. Two days later, she was completely incapable of giving me a simple, succinct description of what he had said. I know a rabbi. He's bright and eloquent, and surely he spent hours preparing the message that he would deliver to his congregation. He offered a truth, an approach to life, was forgotten or perhaps merged into the broader discussion that we all have constantly of how to live life more meaningfully. So, if you receive a call in the next couple days <laughs> asking about the topic of my sermon, you need only reply, it was brilliant. <laughs> For 46 years, I've been your rabbi. There has been a tradition in our congregation that one sermon on the holidays would focus on the state of the world with emphasis on the state of Israel. Rabbi Fromm of blessed memory, our founding rabbi, after learning of the rise to power of Adolf Hitler, traveled to Germany in 1937. At personal risk, he entered the country because he wanted to be able to speak to his congregation directly about what he saw. He warned of the dangers of Nazism and organized and led the Detroit League for Human Rights. My colleague and mentor, Rabbi Sym of blessed memory, spoke often about the early Zionist years. He challenged those who did not understand the centrality of Israel in the life of the Jewish people. He questioned those who did not recognize in those early foundational years of the state that a miracle was taking place. So many of you have traveled to modern Israel and you've experienced a nation reborn. The accomplishments of the Israeli people in every area of science and of technology is so well known. The challenges of living in a very dangerous part of the world, so very clear to all of us who watch the news. I was recently at a meeting at the home of Lisa and Hanan Lis. It was a fundraiser for a unit that I'd never heard of, the Duv Devan. The money raised was intended to help the soldiers of this particular unit reintegrate into Israeli life after what they experiences, the challenges they faced. 5,000 of the best and the brightest apply. 40 become a part of their team. Their mission, going into the West Bank or into Gaza to capture terrorists who have acted or are planning to act against Israel. Former soldiers who were there spoke about the missions. They spoke about the loss of their friends. They reminded us that their job was not simply to be there, but to bring back those who had afflicted so much damage because their mission was to bring them to trial. I could not help but wonder what my friends were thinking. Their son, Matan Asher, is a member of the unit. As we were in conversation, where was he? What was he doing? What conflict was he involved in? What challenges beyond our ability to understand was he experiencing? These are the heroes that always ensure with their blood the security of the state of Israel. In 1948, the world changed for every member of the Jewish community. 
Never again now truly does mean never again in silence. In supporting Israel, we help to provide a safe haven for those fleeing anti-Semitism in countries unwilling or unable to offer our fellow Jews protection. We do take pride in Israel's Nobel Prize winners and the miraculous accomplishments of a nation that is only 69 years old. As Reform and conservative Jews, we were heartened when Israel first appeared to be moving in the direction of recognizing the authority of our rabbis of the Reform and Conservative movement to perform conversions in the state of Israel. We were heartened when Israel created an agreement allowing a space at the Kotel, the wall that is with us this morning, to be able to pray together, men and women and children and families united together as one. Recently, the government of Israel abrogated both of these agreements in order to appease the ultra-Orthodox minority and stay in power. They chose to put politics above principle. Those who are in opposition, including our friend Anat Hoffman, leader of the Women of the Wall, are doing what can only be done in a democracy. They've taken these issues to the Israeli Supreme Court. Supporters in Israel and around the world are awaiting a decision. I am a very proud American, and I am a devoted Zionist. I intend to continue to speak about Israel until the day I am able to announce that there is peace in the Middle East. An optimist by nature, I hope it will be before a time when my colleagues have to physically hold me up. How will you feel, how will I feel, you might ask, to be supported by Rabbi Bennett and Marla. I want you to know that it will not shatter my ego. Let me answer, though, with what may be a true or apocryphal story about Muhammad Ali. The champ was flying in the midst of a powerful storm. The pilot came on and announced, if you have prayers to say, begin right now to offer those prayers and fasten your seat belts. Everyone complied but Ali. Noticing this, the flight attendant approached him and requested that he observe the captain's order. Ali audacious replied, Superman don't need no seat belt. <laughs> the flight attendant did not miss a beat and replied, Superman don't need no airplane either. <laughs> I know you're going to say the sermon it was brilliant and you're going to tell this story and you're done. Stay tuned. <laughs> Not being Superman, I will accept the arms around my shoulders in years to come as I continue to speak. Let's hope that peace comes within our lifetimes. But if not, I will be inspired by my memory of Ali. And I hope you remember this moment. In 1996 in Atlanta, he was weakened by Parkinson's. No one knew who was going to be the one kindling that flame at the Olympics. And he suddenly and slowly and quietly got out of the elevator. With his hands shaking, he reached forward and kindled the flame. The Olympic flame was burning brightly. This perhaps one of the most powerful moments and emotional moments for all of us who are fans of the champion. Ali acted, you see, absolutely consistently with the way he had always lived, with courage, with determination, and as we remember, a willingness to speak up for his beliefs. And I'm going to suggest that we can do no less. A rabbi is often asked the following question. What does Judaism expect me to believe? With over 3,500 years of history, other than God is one, there are many nuanced answers to each and every question. Reform, conservative, orthodox, secular Jews constantly engage in conversations and debate as they try to understand what it means to reinterpret and live by Torah and Sinai. 
But when I'm asked, how does my Judaism expect me to act, I turn to our most eloquent ancestors, the prophets, who stood before the walls that you see when they were the base wall around the Temple Mount where the temple stood of old. They reminded us that we must care for the poor. We must take care of the widow, the orphan, the homeless, the stranger in our midst. Two weeks ago, Susan and I were guests of the Chaldean community as they celebrated the opening of their wonderful new museum and it's right across the street. We were representing the Jewish community. We entered this beautiful building and for a moment toured their museum. Their story so similar to ours. In ancient people, they traced their history back to Babylonia, to Mesopotamia, the place where our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah and Rebecca, Rachel and Leah, a modern people, a minority Catholic population, they fled Iraq. In America, they found freedom, and they found opportunity working in those small food markets. And you see the pictures of them supporting each other, welcoming new members of the family. They became active members of our community. You see, as I stood in their museum, I actually saw the history of my grandparents and of your grandparents and great-grandparents, for they were the dreamers. They were the dreamers of their generation. We're grateful. We're grateful for the opportunities that those that came before us have provided for us. From tenement to sweatshop, from peddlers to store owners and businessmen and professionals, their dream was their effort and the foundation upon which we stand. When I spoke for a moment with several of our neighbors across the street, uh, members of their family who were at risk of deportation, an issue that is of great concern to me. I felt their anguish and their pain. The voice of the prophets require us to speak out and to protect our neighbors and their families. Dr. Martin Luther King spoke, in the end we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence, the silence of our friends. Several years ago, what looked like a moment of opportunity for democracy, Susan and I visited Myanmar, formerly Burma. The country had elected Ms. Aung San Suu Kyi, recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize, to the office of president. She came out of house arrest. There was so much hope for change in this beautiful country today. 400,000 Rohingya refugees, a mainly Muslim population in a Buddhist country, have fled Myanmar to Bangladesh. There are millions of refugees in our world. Numbers are so vast, solutions so difficult, silence is unacceptable. When I think of those who have been displaced, I see the face of a child no different from any of our children, hungry and frightened. For the Jewish people, silence in the face of despair is never a choice. Reaching out to those whose lives have been devastated by natural disaster is on every one of our minds today. In Puerto Rico, Rosh Hashanah services were canceled. Kol Nidre services, Yom Kippur services, were canceled, it was a curfew, an inability to gather together. So many are homeless, feeling hopeless. When basements flooded in Huntington Woods and other local neighborhoods, our organized community rushed with support. I recall, and I'm sure so many of you do, driving on roads where furniture and memories were piled in the streets. Imagine what it means to be a family in Puerto Rico, St. Martin, Texas, or Florida, or so many other places where hurricanes have swept away a lifetime of dreams. 
homes destroyed, water and food scarce, no electricity, the inability to find out if your cousin on the other side of the island is still alive. We are descendants of the prophets who spoke of the need to care for the poor and take care of the hungry. This past year, Susan and I visited Japan. I told you last year that I was going to be doing a lot more traveling. <laughs> At a summer service, I spoke in depth about our time in Hiroshima and added that I would never again hear about nuclear proliferation in the same way. Walk through the park and museum in Hiroshima. See the destruction, the instantaneous destruction and the memorials to the dead. And then multiply this by the power of nuclear weapons today. Living a Jewish life requires each of us in our own way to be a voice of sanity. On this most holy morning, we are reminded of the words of Ecclesiastes. There is nothing new under the sun. In each generation, there will be those among us who will be courageous, who will go to the top of the mountain and will find a way to reach out to those who are in need, to help them build and help them rebuild their future. On Yom Kippur, we unite with Jews the world over. We thank God for our many blessings, and I know you feel as I do how blessed we are to be living in this country, how blessed we are to be living at this time in Jewish history, how blessed we are to be loved by our families. We make peace also as we make blessing. We make peace with those who have caused pain. We have caused pain. We forgive ourselves our own shortcomings. But on Yom Kippur, we consider our responsibilities to our nation. Each one of us has a voice. To our family, each member needs our love. To our history, each one of us, descendants of the prophets. Tonight, after a long and hungry day, we're all going to be together with our family, with our friends. The first taste of food will be so sweet after a relatively short time of deprivation. At that moment, think about the challenges being faced and experienced by so many people in our world. Between bites of kugel and blintz souffle, take a moment with your family to decide what you need to do to make a difference. And if you do receive a call in the next couple days about my message, after you respond, perhaps you will add, our rabbi inspired our family to have a conversation, to act, to engage. Wishing each of you and those you love a Shana Tova, may you be inscribed for blessing in the year ahead. Amen. the ocean that beckons you, nor in the sky so bright, but in every moment surrounding you with a pure guiding light. Believe that I am near, trust me when I say that if you follow my commands, I won't be far away. Self-confined, I've been here right from the start. With 
within your mind, within your heart, I am near. I'm in every word and every loving thought, each brand new song. Don't look so far to find my love. I've been with you. far away look within yourself and find i've been here right from the start within your mind within your heart i am near start within your mind within your heart you'll see we're not so far apart I am near I am near continue this afternoon with our family services at 2 p.m., Mincha Moments at 3.30, and our memorial and me'ila services beginning at 5.15. Along the way, there are study sessions for those of you planning to remain here for the remainder of Yom Kippur. We conclude our service this morning on page 357. God lulad on IG from a marshimo yacht off. O do aleret fishamayim, a yarem, a yarem, keren leamo, te hila, te hila, le pocasida, he plays us. Amen. This day bless us. Amen. This day exalt us. Amen. This day look with favor upon us. Amen. This day inscribe us for a blessed life. Amen. This day hear our plea. Amen. This day uplift us with your righteousness. Gemar Chatimah may we all be inscribed in the book of life.